Lord be with you. And thy spirit. Let us pray. Almighty God, out of whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and perfectly magnify thy holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment, and the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these, and these two commandments take all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. O everlasting God, who has ordained and constituted the services of angels and men in a wonderful order, mercifully grant that as thy holy angels always do thee service in heaven, so by thy appointment they may succour and defend us on earth. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, we pray thee that thy grace may always prevent and follow us, and make us continually to be given to all good works, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, who by the life of the blessed Francis did move thy people to love simple things, grant that after his example we may hold lightly the things of this world, and lay up for ourselves treasures in heaven, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The epistle is from the fourth chapter of Ephesians, beginning with the first verse. I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you that ye walk worthy of the vocation wherewith ye are called with all lowliness and meekness, with long-suffering, forbearing one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, even as ye are called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all, who is above all and through all and in you all. Here endeth the epistle. was written in the 14th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Luke, beginning at the first verse. It came to pass, as Jesus went into the house of one of the chief Pharisees to eat bread on the Sabbath day, that they watched him. And behold, there was a certain man before him which had the dropsy. And Jesus answering spake unto the lawyers and Pharisees, saying, Is it lawful to heal on the Sabbath day? And they held their peace. And he took him and healed him and let him go and answered them, saying, Which of you shall have an ass or an ox fallen into a pit and will not straightway pull him out on the Sabbath day? And they could not answer him again to these things. And he put forth a parable to those which were bidden when he marked how they chose out the chief seats saying unto them, When thou art bidden of any man to a wedding, sit not down in the high seat, lest a more honorable man than you be bidden of him. And he that bade thee and him come, and say to thee, Give this man place, and thou begin with shame to take the Lord's place. But when thou art bidden, 
Go and sit down in the lowest place, that when he that bade him cometh, he may say unto thee, Friend, go up higher, then shall thou have worship in the presence of them that sit at meat with thee. For whosoever exalted himself shall be abased, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to thee, thee O Christ. Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, the God of his Father before all the world, God of God, light of life, very God and very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified for the sake of all of us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge the to quick of the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost. The Lord, the giver of life, who proceeded from the Father and the Son, who in the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, is faith by the prophets. And I believe one Catholic and Apostolic Church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Today's Gospel relates when Jesus was invited to a party of Pharisees on the Sabbath and found himself contradicting the law. In the middle of a large gathering of Pharisees, a man, suffering from dropsy, boldly approaches Jesus and asks to be healed of his condition. Jesus does so to the relief of the afflicted man and the consternation of the assembled Pharisees. Here Jesus is affirming a message he repeats over and over throughout the Gospels and presents a new look at the law itself. To begin with, the affliction dropsy is what we call edema today, the swelling of tissue caused by the retention of water typically in the legs and feet, but can be found just about anywhere on the body. Although we often differentiate what type of edema based on cause and presentation, in early times it, it was received the blanket description of dropsy. So, this man with dropsy may have had serious complications such as congestive heart failure. We don't know, but his condition was dire. It was dire enough to seek out the man he had heard about who could heal people of their ailments. That the man approached Jesus and made the request directly also suggests he already knew of Jesus' reputation of miracles and believed that Jesus could heal him. This faith was critical in him being healed, and he was healed. The Pharisees witnessing this miracle saw the importance of the healing, but it was lost upon them. They saw with their eyes, but not their hearts. Jesus asked the Pharisees if it was legal to heal someone on the Sabbath day. The Pharisees said nothing, but it was obvious that they thought to do so would help put themselves under, under risk under the law. After healing the man afflicted with dropsy, Jesus re related the parable of the man rescuing an animal from a well or a pit, challenging them, challenging them to deny that they would still have done nothing to save their animal. In this, Jesus was challenging the law they lived under. Jesus maintained that sometimes you go against the law. Jesus was saying that sometimes circumstances dictate 
you set the law aside. In all cases that Jesus made in the Gospels, it was for the love of one's neighbor that the law was open to interpretation. This could be further applied to all laws. Love should be the interpreter for what and how a law should be or not be applied. Blind application of any law without love often leads to suffering and the deterioration of society. The reason to enact just laws is to encourage the love of one another. In Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 13, he said, Love, therefore, is the fulfillment of the law. Owe no man anything save to love one another. For if I love my neighbor, I help him, protect him, hold him in honor, and do what I would have done to me. There are certain examples in the Bible where the law was set aside or suspended according to necessity, according to a loving interpretation. In Matthew 12, Jesus makes use of such an example involving King David. It was related in the first book of Samuel, let me see, first one line. David and his men were without food. Going to the high priest for some, David was told the high priest had none other than the showbread. As the showbread was only to be eaten by the high priest, David and his men would have been committing a grave sin under the law to take it. Nevertheless, the circumstances dictated the need, the necessity for David to take the consecrated bread. David and his men ate fully of the showbread and were held sinless, as the law could obviously be set aside when the situation demanded it. Today we recognize the principle of the law tempered with love and compassion and how we interpret some rules of fasting, for example. On certain days we designate days of fasting and prayer. We are to refrain from eating meat, for example. However, we set those expectations aside for people over 50, those who might be ill, and those who might be pregnant. To do so doesn't repeal the rules or even give someone favored status. It is simply the recognition that it is better to set this requirement aside for the health and well-being of the injured individuals involved. Again, we don't follow the letter, but the spirit of the law. Applying love is above the law to the hypothetical situation in the parable as to whether you would save the animal or the pit Jesus was starkly challenging the notion you can't heal on Sabbath. If you would go run and save an animal, certainly you should go run and help your neighbor if they were in need, if they were in danger, if they were sick. Your responsibility to love to your neighbor demands it. Jesus was saying, don't live by the letter of the law, rather live by the spirit of the law, tempered with love. Think back to that good Samaritan. Found the man on the side of the road, helped him anyway. It's the same thing. After making the point about the law, Jesus then turned his attention to the privileges of the Pharisees. If you go to a feast, do not take the high seats. For if someone greater than you comes, you will be embarrassed when the host asks you to move to a lower position to make room for the higher person. Here Jesus is directly addressing the Pharisees and their assumption that they deserve to be seated in the highest place of honor. He that would be the greatest, let him take the lowest seat. Jesus was not talking about those in civil authority, but rather in spiritual ways. If you in your heart take the place of a servant, you will not be called out for acting above your place. If you are a servant in your heart, it will show forth in your actions, even if you are appointed to the most powerful in the land. It is thus that a governor or a president could act as a servant. 
When the disciples were squabbling over which of them was first, Jesus pointed out, the kings of the Gentiles have lordship over them, and they have authority over them, and they are called benefactors. But ye shall not be so, for he that is greater among you, let him become as the younger, and he that is the chief, as he that doth serve. Jesus gave an example of this in Luke 22. For which is greater, he that sitteth at meat, or he that serveth? It is not he that sitteth at meat, but I am in the midst of you as he that serveth. And he elaborated with, whoever would be, whoever would come great among you shall be your minister, and whoever shall be among you first shall be your servant. Even as the Son of Man came not to be ministered unto, but to minister and give his life as a ransom for many. For every man that exalteth himself shall be humbled, and he that humbled himself shall be exalted. So what does this mean for us? We should act with humility and be subject to one another. And don't make rules without having the love of your neighbor in your heart. Should you find some rule of burden upon your neighbor, consider setting the rule aside. Better to act in love and live than perish in law. Amen. The only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and forever. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. The holy sacrifice is offered at the place and glory of God and with special intention for the recovery of those in this parish who are sick. Let us pray for the whole state of Christ's church men here in earth. <coughs> Almighty and everlasting God, who by thy holy apostles taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our oblation and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire <coughs> continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord. And grant that all they who confess thy holy name may agree the truth of thy holy word, and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also so to direct and dispose the hearts of all Christian rulers, and especially Donald our president, and Lawrence our governor, that they may truly and impartially administer justice to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops, priests, and deacons, and especially to thy servant John, our bishop, 
that they may by their light and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, rightly and duly and uh, right and rightly and duly administer thy heavy sacraments. And to all thy people give thy heavenly grace, and especially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence they may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of their life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, especially those whom we mention in the secrecy of our hearts. Bless thy holy name for thy servants to part this life of my faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace and following their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins, and are in love and charity with your neighbours, and intend to lead a new life, following the commandments of God, and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith, and take this holy sacrament to your comfort, and make your humble confession to Almighty God, meekly kneeling upon your knees. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, child of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, which we from time to time most grievously have committed, by thought, word, and deed, against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnest to repent, and are heartily sorry for being misdoing. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. And our Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, forgive us all of his past, and not that we may never go out. So serve me, please, and give us his life. To your honor and glory, and your name, who Jesus Christ is the Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins unto all those who with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him. Have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ hath unto all who truly turn to him. Come unto me, or ye that travail in a heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son to the end that all that believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Here also what St. Paul saith, This is a true saying, and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Here also what St. John saith, If any man has sinned, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, Almighty, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who on the first day of the week overcame death and the grave and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. Therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name evermore, praising thee and saying, Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee, O Lord most high. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord, who is in the highest. We do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table. But thou art the same, Lord, whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, 
that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who may bear by his one oblation of himself once offered, a full, perfect, and sufficient sacrifice, oblation, and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and in institute in his heavy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed to bread, and when he had given thanks, he prayed it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. O Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, grant us thy peace. Lord, I am not worthy that thou come under my roof, but speak the word out of me, and my soul shall be healed. Our Lord Jesus Christ, which was given for me, preserve my body and soul and everlasting life. The blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, which was shed for me, preserve my body and soul and everlasting life. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him that taketh away the sins of the world. Happy are they who have caught in his supper. The Lord be with you. As our Saviour Christ hath taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. 
He loves us today and our daily bread. He gives us our trespasses as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. O Lord and Heavenly Father, we, thy humble servants, entirely desire thy fatherly goodness mercifully to accept this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Most humbly beseech you to grant that by the merits and death of thy Son, Jesus Christ, and through faith in his blood, we and all thy holy church may obtain remission of our sins and all other benefits of his passion. And here we offer and present unto thee, O Lord, ourselves, our souls and bodies, to be a reasonable, holy, and lively sacrifice unto thee. Humbly beseeching thee that all we who should be partakers of this holy communion may be fulfilled with thy grace and heavenly benediction. And although it would be unworthy for our manifold sins to offer unto thee any sacrifice, yet we beseech thee to accept this, our bounden duty and service, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offences. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom in the unity of the Holy Ghost, all honour and glory be unto thee, O Father Almighty, world without end. Amen. Let us stand and say the glory of the next justice. <clears throat> glory be to God on high, and on earth peace good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee, we give thanks to thee for thy great glory. O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty, O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, O Lord God, the Lamb of God, Son of the Father, that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand, God the Father, have mercy upon us. For thou only art holy, thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with thy spirit. Let us pray. The peace of God which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. <clears throat> 